Same to you. Ready for the weekend? Yeah. Great. Who's here for the first time? Raise your hand. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Well, welcome to Launchpad Space. Um, my name is Shiri. I'm the program manager here at Launchpad Space. <laughs> And well, first of all, welcome. I'm very happy to see you all here. And uh, I can just say a few words about the Launchpad Space, what we're doing here, also what this day is about. Um, so Launchpad Space is Google Space to interact with startups and developers by offering free educational events. So we host anything from code labs, hackathon, meetups, um, both external and with the Google team. So this is your chance to kind of like interact with uh, Google, the Google teams as well, and learn from um, experts here at Google and also from Silicon Valley. And um, we're also the international hub for the Launchpad program, which is uh, Google's global star uh, startup program that offers um, customized mentoring and also an accelerator program for startups uh, from emerging ecosystems. Uh, so we have a lot going on here, and I'm super happy to see you all here now that you're a part of our community. I encourage you, you're going to get updates by weekly newsletters. So when you see events, please come and uh, join us. Um, it's going to be it's great. Uh, this is our monthly co-working day. So every month on a, on a monthly basis, basically, we host uh, co-working days. We open our doors to anyone who wants to come and learn. And we're featuring Cloud and Firebase today, which I'm super excited about. Um, I'm going to present the first talk. Basically, it's a full day. Come and work from here. To come and work from here, we're going to have in terms of the agenda. We're going to have at 12. We're going to have lunch, and then at one, we're going to have a code lab. You're going to learn all about it. And you're going to have people helping you here, also to kind of wrap up. And at uh, 2.30 to 4.30, we're going to have a mentoring uh, session. So if you haven't signed up yet, please, we have the laptops over there, the Chromebooks, and you can just sign up quickly to, uh, to a mentoring session. And then at 4.30, we're going to have a fun Friday happy hour. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be great. So it's really my pleasure to um, present Susan Goldblatt, who's a software engineer with Firebase, with the Firebase team. She's going to talk about all about Firebase. So please give a round of applause. Welcome, Susan. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome um, to the Launchpad Coworking Day. I'm really excited for you guys to be here. I'm actually just like very excited to hear about what everyone has been doing and building. Um, it's like really, really fun for me. So as um, I'm Susan Goldblatt, and I'm here to talk a little bit about Firebase. I'm a software engineer on the console team. So I do Angular and TypeScript, um, a bunch of that. If you have questions about that, I can also answer them as well. Um, so who has heard of Firebase at all? OK, that's great. That's really, really great. Um, and then, so what what is Firebase? Um, I think most people, when they think of it, have heard of the real-time database, maybe heard of auth. Um, but Firebase is actually like a suite of tools that helps you build um, better apps and grow your business. Um, so I think at Firebase, we really so have done a lot of work to help developers build the best apps that they can. So my background is I used to work at a startup in New York, um, and I was a Django uh, developer, <laughs> um, a server engineer. And we hosted our own machines, and I just remember so many instances of me being like, okay, well, let me add an endpoint, like slash API, slash users, UID equals this. And like, I spent like so much of my time doing that. And I think Firebase is a group of people who's like, hey, that's cool, but like if you do that at enough companies, um, like maybe someone should refactor that code, is like how I think about it. And so Firebase has a bunch of different tools that helps you build infrastructure um, and grow and develop your applications. Because we really want our developers to be successful, so we try and make our applications and our services make our developers as successful as possible. So we have this kind of growing suite of tools. Um, today I'm only going to talk about this develop section, uh, but there's also this whole other grow area over here that's like dynamic links, invites, add, adding ads, um, messaging your users, getting analytics integration set up. Um, there's a bunch of tools for that, and a bunch. if you have questions about that, you are welcome um, to ask questions about that. But today we're going to be talking about this develop section um, over here and how, how that works. Um, the other really cool thing uh, to point out about Firebase is that 
Um, we're pretty agnostic in terms of what devices uh, we work with, so iOS and Android. Um, complete feature parity except for one thing called the test lab, which I think really only makes sense for Android um, since there's so many devices. But that's a whole other story. Um, and most things when applicable are able on the web. Um, and then C++ and Unity um, are also uh, available and that's for game development. So um, we know that your users aren't only going to be using iOS. Um, <laughs> and so we don't only use iOS or Android. So. So um, in the first part, I'm going to talk about these five things, the real-time database, hosting, authentication, cloud functions, and cloud storage. Um, just a quick overview of all of them. I do want to start, um, hopefully, with an anecdote. So when you join the Firebase team um, at Google, and I think before, there's a little tradition of having um, your manager comes up to you on the first day, and you're like on your new team, you're like sitting at your desk, and your manager's like, hey, um, <coughs> What I'm going to need from you is like while you're setting up everything and while you're doing your job, you have to build an entire app. And like it has to be in real time. You have to be able to log in. Um, and it has to be hosted on Google infrastructure. And it also has to be available to others on the internet. And you're like, I was like, ugh. <laughs> um, I was like, did I come to the wrong thing? Like that sounds crazy. And he's like, oh yeah, by the way, um, it has to be, you have to present it to all of your coworkers on Friday. And then I immediately was like, I don't know. <laughs> like I don't know what to do, and I think um, after that initial fear kind of settled, um, I was like, okay, like there has to be a way to do this because, like, in my head, I was like, okay, I can set up a Django server and like run it. I don't really know how Google infrastructure works, but like I'm gonna see what I can do, and then like I'll like start getting OAuth clients set up to log in and log out, and it was just like my brain, like I could see just like the little wheels going, and my manager was like calm it down, um, like, look into Firebase and see what you can do. Um, and I think, like, as you guys are working on the Launchpad space, like, the same feelings must come up where you're like, oh, I have to do all these things. And um, I think Firebase has, like, a lot of tools that help make some of those a little bit easier. Um, and so the first thing that I stumbled upon was authentication. And so um, Firebase Auth is a way of managing um, logging in to your application and um, the logged in state. So you know on any website when you go in and it's like, hey, log in with Facebook, log in with Google, log in with Twitter. Um, that's what this does and it handles everything for you um, really, really simply. It also has this out of the box UI. I think that's my favorite part, like maybe because I work um, on the UI at the moment at Google is like knowing that if a user saw like a Facebook button and it's like not the right color, they're gonna be like, I don't trust you. I don't trust any of this. Like, <laughs> because that's what I would do because I would be like, I'm not entering my password anywhere. Um, and so Firebase handles um, taking you to the right page um, on Facebook, logging in and, and authenticating the user and storing that information. So at my um, old startup, what I would do is we would uh, ask for a username and password and then I would be like, I really don't want to be a part of one of those leaks <laughs> where like Target like it sends out all your email information and everyone is like like that's like a make or break moment for a company um, and so we like salt and hash our passwords and we like sort all of our information and, and really tried our best um, to do that but it took a lot of time when I could have been building features like thinking like oh hey like is this user logged in like going into our load balancer and like rechecking things like. Um, all of that stuff, like every other company has also set up, and um, I think for me, Firebase authentication, like I don't ever want to have to write an authentication code again because I just want to use this. Um, and so it's a pretty short few lines of code um, to add in and update, and um, it keeps you logged in throughout your application, um, which comes really helpful. So uh, when I was building out my first week project, I set this up almost immediately, and then I was like, okay you can log in and my dream app was that um, I wanted to do uh, I travel a lot and I love to travel with friends and I was like I want to make it so that like I have a map and when I like drag and drop a pin um, oh well is it coming back no let's see let's see oh that's the lot my password I didn't click enough Sorry, 
sorry, y'all. Hey, success. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, so I wanted to have this like drag and drop pin situation because I was like, that sounds great. That's like a thing I would want to use all the time um, whenever I'm planning anything. And so when I set up the authentication, I was like, great, you can log in. Now to the real meaty part of this, which is like setting up some sort of like real time database um, situation. Unfortunately. Um, I think, as most of you know, Firebase offers the real-time database. I think this is kind of like a big flagship um, product to use and see. Um, so it's a cloud-hosted NoSQL database. Um, and what does that mean exactly? It's kind of, um, I think of it as like I get a direct line to my database. Um, and so when you're logged in, uh, you get um, a way to like write and save data to your database. And then that data comes and propagates immediately within milliseconds out to all of the clients. And so um, it's really, really simple and delightful to use. I think one of the most enjoyable things is to like use, um, open up your like client, have the um, your console open, and then at the same time um, have the like database panel open on one side and uh, Firebase, and then update data, and then see it just like immediately flow in, and like it feels unreal. Um, to me, so I really enjoy that. Um, so it's the real-time database. Um, as you can see, the data like flows up and then flows down to all your other clients. Um, it's a really, really useful tool as a database to build um, rich and collaborative applications right out, off the bat. Um, I think a lot of times, like talking to people, they're kind of like real-time database makes it so that it's like real-time is by default. Um, which I think is a really great tactic because as I've like been using more applications, I'm like, if it's not real time, I'm like, why is it not? Why is it not running in real time? Like, why if these like tools are available, like, why are developers not using it? It's a really delightful experiment to go through. Um, and so, um, I think the real time database is like a game changer in terms of like how I think about um, building out a real time application. Um, so. The other thing to note is that there's a concurrency. Um, you can have up to 100,000 concurrent connections, and I think um, this is really cool. It's it's good for context to know that um, the number of users using the app is like two to three fold more than that. Um, so to get to 100,000 concurrent connections, you would have to have um, like millions of users, tens of millions of users using your application, um, and um, using that to reach that limit. Um, and the other thing with the real-time database is I think, um, like, I feel like a lot of we talk about how great it is, but it also has limitations. Um, and it's a cloud-hosted NoSQL database, so uh, when you're dealing with a NoSQL database, there's certain things that you probably shouldn't put into the real-time database. Um, and if you do put them into the real-time database, you're going to get um, a lot of bandwidth usage. So if you want to store images, I probably wouldn't put them in the real-time database because it's going to be just a mess. Um, we have this uh, tool called the Profiler, and it allows you to inspect bandwidth and latency. So if you are building out your application on the real-time database and you notice that some of your uh, bandwidth and latency seems high, uh, you can use this profile tool to figure out what exactly is happening um, within the real-time database. So there's some tooling around that, which I think is really helpful. Um, and so as I said, there's kind of like this whole subset of data that you probably shouldn't put in the real-time database, and I think images is a really um, classic example of that. Uh, but we also offer cloud storage as a way of um, storing data and information as um, in a file storage type of scenario. So it works really well with for connectivity, and it's also backed by um, Google Cloud Storage, which I think is really um, Good to know. I think a lot of the stuff with Firebase too that makes it um, really accessible is like not only is it like a well-designed product and API to use, it's also like completely backed by um, the Google backend. So everything is secure, everything is stable and running, and I think that can be really um, helpful uh, when I think about all of these different products. So cloud storage um, stores like files and information that you would want to. Um, not put in a real-time database. This is just like another tool in the tool belt of storing information and data. And so, let's see. So we kind of covered all these like different ways of information. And, and in your application, if you 
um, have built out and you use authentication, you use the database, you use cloud storage, um, you actually don't need a server at all. Um, with Because you're accessing your database directly, there's no need to um, be talking, at least in these like, in my demo application, my first week project, there is no need for me to have any type of server interaction at all because my authentication was handled by Firebase Auth. My real-time database access was, like I was my own API in the way that I designed my database. Um, and then, but I think in the real world, um, you do need a server of sorts. You need something that's gonna be like, billing. Like, <laughs> I think when I immediately, um, learning Firebase, I was like, well, how do I charge my customers? Um, because that's my first go-to thought. <laughs> um, and so I think for a long time, um, that answer wasn't really solved. Um, but at, um, with the launch of Cloud Functions, um, that answer has been resolved now. And Cloud Functions is kind of this way of connecting and interacting all of the Firebase products with one another. Um, and so it serves as the glue that connects um, all of these projects. So if you want, um, when you authenticate, um, to update certain values uh, in the database, um, you could use a function to talk in between them. When someone um, signs in or clicks a button, um, you can use a function to call Stripe and and charge the user. So functions are this way of, um, of connecting that information. But I also think um, the really cool thing about functions is that they're really a Firebase -y idea. I think functions is a great name because it's like a functional programming in the sense that you get, you listen on certain events and then you really only care about those events and you act on them and then you execute your code and then it, and it's done. Um, and I think that's a really beautiful way of working with all of these um, other tools is that um, when you write your application and when you write your iOS app or when I was writing my web app, there's a really nice way and flow of kind of listening for the real-time database to update and like not caring at all what happens in your functions because um, when a function is triggered, so like a good example is um, like oftentimes you want to resize images. And so let's say a user uploads a really large image um, and you put it in cloud storage. And your application is like, hey, I kind of want to show a, um, like a smaller version of that image on my app. And I've already said like putting images in the real-time database, probably not a good idea. Um, so you have this huge image on storage and you're like, okay, I could link to it, I guess, but like how would I even get my link? to go to the real-time database? How would the real-time database know it all? Um, and the trick is, so you have a function that um, lives in cloud code, and um, once you upload a storage, it's like, hey, I see that you uploaded a file to storage, and like I'm gonna resize it using a third-party API, and then I'm gonna save that back in a storage bucket, but what I'm also gonna do is um, write to the real-time database um, and say like, hey, here's the link to um, my, like, resized image. Um, and that happens really independently of whatever happens in the app. So the app is just like, hey, here's this photo, and then everything else um, happens on its own. And then when um, the cloud function writes to the real-time database, at that point, the real-time database is in real time, and the app is like, oh, hey, like, I just got this information about displaying an image, and like, I'm gonna do it and display it. And like, it's pretty um, decoupled from the function and storage, and I think that's a really cool paradigm when um, thinking about programming. And I feel like when I programmed in the past, I've often wanted to do that, and then um, kind of like everything's gotten messy. And I've been like, actually, I think my server call should do this one other thing, and then it's like I have one function that did everything, <laughs> and then um, all my tests were kind of around that, and I think. Um, functions really decouples that logic. So what happens in the UI of um, the application um, depends um, on the data that's coming into it. Uh, and you react in the same way as if a user had inputted it or a cloud function um, had inputted it. And I think that's really helpful um, and really cool to see. 
Um, so now, so far, we have the database for real-time data. Um, we have cloud storage to store our images. If I were doing my, um, my trip planning, maybe I post a photo of that on there. You can sign in and sign out. Um, seems like pretty good. Um, all of this um, just automatically runs on Google infrastructure. So I've got like those steps of my, um, my boss's uh, request to be done. But then the final one is putting it out on the internet. So um, when you have a Firebase project, um, you can deploy it to like a, a specific URL almost immediately using hosting. Um, so to serve static assets, um, you can deploy your application with hosting. Um, it immediately goes out and populated um, in a bunch of different uh, regions and um, will serve your static contact. It's SSL by default. Um, and you can also set up custom domains. And for me, this was also another game changer because um, in side projects and in my last job, I had spent so much time um, figuring out how to get my domain name pointing to the machine that was holding my code. <laughs> like I was like, um, I could do a bunch of other complicated stuff, and the second that like C names and A names and like pointer machines and aliases came out, I was just like, this is like a whole other world that I um, like definitely am interested in, and it's great to know about, but when you're just trying to like put up a website, there's really not a lot of um, need to go through all of that pain and hassle every single time um, that you run into it. And I found hosting to be a really great tool um, to just deploy your code and have it be connected to a custom domain. So hosting um, sets everything up on, um, on the internet and lets you put up custom domains in a really, really as pain-free as possible. I think it will always be a little bit painful um, even if you've done it like a bunch, like I've now set up custom domains a bunch of times and I'm still like, it's like still a little bit annoying, but I think this is like the best process by far that I have seen. So um, that is hosting. And so that actually gets us to all of, in a week, this, I was able to um, make this real time app. I was able to um, write functions to easily uh, sent data in between my parts of code. I was able to log in to a user, I was able to log them out. There's also a lot of really cool stuff you can do um, once, you're, once you're a little bit more advanced with saying like, hey, I'm gonna share this map with some people, but like, I don't want my non-shared maps to be shown. And all of that logic is um, super easy to be set up, and so you can have like more complicated um, rules around your database and who has access to it. Um, so I had all of that set up, I have it on the internet, and I can display it. And that's kind of the end of my journey in my one week demo app. Um, and like, I was like so proud of myself and like <laughs> working on it. Um, but then there's like this whole other thing when you're building an application that like I just didn't do at all because um, it was a, t a bit of a demo. Um, and that's testing and crash reporting. Um, and performance monitoring. So when you're um, developing an app, when you just you're doing it, um, obviously you like know exactly where all your crashes are happening. You know exactly um, what's going on. You know exactly how it looks on your screen. Um, but the second that you give that to even like the smallest number of people, um, you're going to run into these issues where like someone's like, "Hey, your app crashed," and you're like, "It did," and they're like, "Yeah, it crashed." And you're like, oh, what, what screen were you on? Like, what were you doing? And they're just like, I don't know, it just crashed. <laughs> and you're gonna be like, oh, okay. Um, oh, shoot. Let me go to this slide first. Um, and so, luckily, like, we have this tool, um, so called Crash Reporting, and it um, looks at your crashes. It's a really helpful console panel. Um, you add like one line of code to your application and it shows you where all of the crashes in your app happened and the stack trace that goes along with them and like what screen they were viewing and, and certain um, other analytics tools. And this is like a delight. Um, I wrote like a toy application for um, a demo um, for someone's project at IO and like three people used it and all three of them saw crashes. And I was like, I know exactly what's happening here and here and here and it was like so great. Um, the one thing I'll say about this is so I don't, 
I think if people know about crash reporting or crash analytics, so Google recently um, acquired the Fabric team, and Fabric has crash analytics, and crash analytics is like a much more advanced, um, has like more advanced features than crash reporting, and so our goal is to um, incorporate crash reporting into um, crash analytics and have crash analytics be the main way of, of viewing it. So that process takes a long time because um, there's a lot of like steps and processes um, that go along with uh, taking um, a fully functional product and moving it and replacing it with another fully functional product and um, integrating those seamlessly as possible. Um, so crash analytics is really, really great. That's actually the one that I've used. I haven't, um, and you can log into Fabric and use crash analytics as well. Um, so, really, really, really great product, really delightful experience, and like, helps a lot. Um, so the other really cool thing um, is the, this is the Firebase Test Lab, so this is the one feature that's only available on Android, and I said, I think maybe that makes sense, because Android literally, like, this whole diagram is, like, probably a just mere spackling of actual Android products um, <laughs> that you, your application can run on and maybe um, fail on as well. So the test lab um, lets you try out your application and create tests um, running on uh, virtual uh, products within Google's infrastructure. Um, so it'll let you test everything out and make sure um, that it works as intended on a bunch of different products. Um, so that's a really great feature and product if you're building out um, those types of things. So the other thing that's really cool, um, and the last performance metric um, is Firebase performance. So um, it helps you figure out um, the load times, um, analyzing network requests, like how long um, it can take to load a page. I was actually, um, this morning, I tried to buy a new laptop case on Amazon. <laughs> and Amazon was, uh, broken um, and Amazon like or like it took a long long time to load um, the page to actually click purchase and I happen to know uh, that it's like I don't know the exact numbers but every second of slowness is like a hundred million dollars just like <laughs> like booming out the door like those numbers really matter um, and it's it's like important to know what they are and to know um, how to improve them, and so performance testing um, like that can be a little bit, a little bit tricky. And so uh, this is a tool to help you monitor that, and you can add in custom traces if you for certain items and things like that. So that's a really great tool um, to use as well to have in your toolbox. So so far, um, we've we've gone through all of develop. Um, there's still a bunch of other things, analytics, cloud messaging. Um, cloud messaging is really cool. It lets you like send uh, messages out um, to a bunch of different uh, contents and like specify different regions. Um, it's a really great way to talk to your customers. I'm not going to go into Grow at all. Um, I find, I think um, that's for another time. I don't want to like overwhelm everyone uh, with a bunch of new information. Um, yeah, but we've been able. Um, to really quickly, like in a week, you can set up a lot of these things um, and then start focusing on kind of like what makes your app special, like what has your special sauce, and let kind of us handle like dealing with Google infrastructure and hosting and maintaining the website and code, uh, making sure there's no downtime. So I think that's kind of a really um, big benefit for Firebase and using Firebase and Google products. Um, so, that's most of it. If you're really curious about Firebase, so I used to be a teacher, um, or not a teacher exactly, but I taught in the classroom. Um, and I find that with stuff like this, it's way, 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 way more helpful to just get your hands in it and see what's happening. And like, I can explain it to you all day, but it's gonna be like, you're gonna be like, oh, that makes total sense um, when you like go and look at the courses. So Firebase also has a bunch of YouTube videos, um, like walking through code, um, really, really delightful content, and we spend a lot of time thinking and caring about that. Um, I think we care a lot about making sure that our developers are happy and that um, they like the products and they know how to use them and enjoy using them. And so 
Um, there's a training program, you can do Firebase in a weekend. Um, there's a lot of hands-on docs, there's a lot of um, repositories that you can look at. Um, if you're interested, there's also an alpha program. Um, so, as I said, Firebase really, really cares about what our um, developers think about us, and we love getting feedback. If, if you go look on um, Stack Overflow, there's actually just like most of the responses are from our internal team of people just like going on and responding to things. Um, every like Hacker News put like I have like sat through and read all of the comments on Hacker News um, about the products. So I think um, we really care about that. And we love getting information and feedback. So if you want to join the Alpha program, you get to um, use new features uh, before they're um, available to other people in the outside world. The other thing that is also worth pointing out is um, our GitHub. A lot of our SDKs, so the things that um, connect uh, the, your clients to Firebase, are all open source. Um, so not, not all of them, all of them, but a lot of them are open source and you can look at the code um, and access these repositories. There's a bunch of my like Stripe example for functions where I was like, that's what I need, I want to charge people right now. Um, there's, <laughs> there's a Stripe example on our, our GitHub of how to use functions. So um, there's a lot of really cool content on there um, and I would recommend like, looking through it um, if you're curious about how things work. Uh, and seeing uh, how how that looks and the different examples that we have, and that's that's it uh, in terms of um, what I have to say to everyone. Um, Firebase is a really great set of tools. Um, I really really enjoy it, um, and yeah, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, that's everything I have. Woo. Oh yeah, are there any questions? Hello. <laughs> Great. Okay. Oh, do you have one? Well, just one little one. Going back yeah, to, yeah, go Going back to the question, so yeah. what is Firebase? Yeah. What? So I, I heard you talk about sort of real time, no SQL, uh, synchronization. Yes. So where's the database? You know, how does this relate to database, the, the desire to, to build a persistent repository and provide query service? Mm, good question. Good so, question. So, so if you took, say, with regard to sync versus real time versus distributed database, you know, if you took out, if you started throwing away nodes, you know, how many nodes could you throw away before you lost data? I presume if it's just sync, you can throw away all the clients uh -huh. and you can keep a central repository and you didn't lose any data. If it's a distributed database, okay. you, you, you know, if you throw away more than a third, you're you might actually start losing stuff if it's kind of sharded in a sense. Ah, so, so, yes. what, so is, is, it, is there one critical repository in real time just means, oh, we kind of do sync more or less quickly? Um, Same day sync. I'm trying to, I'm not 100% familiar. Um, let me think. I can look into it and get back to you. I think it's probably, um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Let me, I'll talk to you afterwards. Yeah. Yes? Is the cloud function actually equivalent to AWS Lambda? Is it equivalent? Good question. Um, it is in the same vein. Um, I try not to like compare like apples and oranges a little bit. Um, I think the one of the really cool things about um, Cloud Functions is that it's really heavily and tightly integrated with the rest of the products. Um, and so when you're accessing a Cloud Function, um, you can easily write to the database um, and you can easily uh, upload files to storage. And I think that's like a really big uh, benefit of Cloud Functions. Um, but I can't really speak on uh, how it compares to Lambda um, because I haven't actually used Lambda before. So. And like programming languages like, doesn't support. Oh, good question, good point. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Um, functions are really cool, like I think of them as like a little bubble that you, <laughs> yeah, I'm really visual and I'm not, sorry. When you write them, it's kind of like this like little bubble and then you send it off into the cloud 
and it has all of your node packages installed with it, and in the cloud it just runs, um, it runs up a little environment, and when something triggers it, it just like runs through all of it. Um, and so that's, the, that's kind of how those work. Well, thank you very much, thank you. Susan. Thank oh, you very much. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, well, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. And uh, we're going to have lunch soon, and then 2.30 starts the mentoring session. You can ask more questions then. So thank you. Thank you.